Yesterday, we signed a package of nation-leading laws to address how we want to protect New Yorkers, the safety of New Yorkers. Today, we take a step toward protecting the dignity of New Yorkers and deal with the shortage of affordable housing, because I deeply believe that housing is a human right. It's about dignity. It's about feeling valued. It's about having a home. And I know that everyone in this room is committed to recognizing and acting upon that enduring and guiding philosophy. So I want to thank everyone who's been on this journey with us to ensure that we leave no stone unturned in our quest to find opportunities to give people what they deserve, and that is a roof over their head. This shared fight, collective fight, is more urgent than ever before because New Yorkers are struggling so much. They came through a pandemic, life was turned upside down, emotional stress, medical stress for many, loss of life, loss of friends, loss of income, uh, and many just took financial hits that continue to this day. And on top of all that, the harsh realities of inflation, the cost of living going through the roof day after day, everything from gas to groceries, all these are forces beyond their control and it is just so frustrating for people. It either has set them further back or robbed them of any gains they would have seen with a small increase in their paycheck. Simply put, life has gotten harder and harsher and more costly. And the most expensive of all, housing, housing. So we need to continue to find solutions to this age-old problem that has now been exacerbated. And that's exactly what we're doing here today. As we envision the post-pandemic world, we think everything from work life, education, telehealth services, all the way to housing. And with hotels hit so hard by the pandemic, many of them never reopened, an opportunity has arisen to use vacant hotels in a way that'll lift people up and give them, yes, the dignity of a home. And we found a way to do it creatively. The legislation that we're signing today will help create new affordable housing units. And I'm proud to sign a bill that allows going forward hotel rooms to be converted into permanent housing. And again, I want to thank Senator Kavanaugh, who's with us here today. You'll hear from him in a couple of minutes, and uh, Assemblymember Simowitz. And no longer will these rooms sit vacant, you know, mocking as people sleep on a street in front of them or struggle to find a home. No longer. No longer. Because let me be clear, there are good hotels out there with good paying jobs. I stay in one almost every night in the city of Newark. Uh, they are my friends, the hard workers. They're my support system. They're my allies. We need to support them, the good hotels. We need to make sure that there are plentiful hotels to support our tourism economy, the ecosystem of bringing New Yorkers here, something the mayor and I speak about often, reopening our city to others who've been away for two years. I see it. I feel it. I walk the streets. They're crowded again. It's a good feeling because hotels are part of that ecosystem. And they're part of the unique New York City experience. It's part of our identity. We cherish that, we honor that, and we want to preserve that. Those hotels and those jobs should be preserved. But there's also a large number of failing and problem hotels in our neighborhoods. They pay people low wages, they're run down, and sometimes they present a safety risk in their neighborhoods. These hotels need to be reimagined. And with the stroke of a pen today, they will be. We're going to make the rules more flexible, make it easier to convert underused properties into residential space, meaning someone's home. And that's something I've been fighting for, increasing the stock of affordable housing my entire career, back to when I was on a town board member. I was fighting to bring affordable and supportive housing into my hometown at a time when others were fighting against it. I won those battles, but they were hard fought. There was resistance from people, from communities who didn't understand that everyone deserves the right to live in a home. And since day one, my philosophy in office has been to do the same, to use all the tools we have in state government and have a bold plan to increase affordable housing, access to it. And it starts with what we just accomplished in our budget. First time ever, an historic $25 billion 
to create 100,000 new housing units, as well as on top of that, at least $1.5 billion for an additional 10,000 supportive housing units. Who are we supporting? We're supporting our neighbors. People have been left on the streets who are homeless. People who have mental health challenges. People who have addiction problems like many of our family members had or still have today. Our returning veterans who come back with PTSD after they served our nation, they deserve a home. LGBTQ seniors who don't have children to take care of them as they age. This is what supportive housing is all about. This is why I believe in the power of harnessing government, spaces, private sector together toward this cause. We also allocated $100 million toward housing our neighbors with Dignity Act, the Honda Act, and that's to convert commercial properties and distressed hotel properties across the state. But it's not just about building more, it's about helping people stay in their homes. And that's why we had $900 million, $900 million for the emergency rental assistance program because the pandemic is not over for a lot of people. They got behind in their rent and they're struggling. This is an albatross around their necks. And they can't break free from it, so we're helping them get back on their feet. So we've, because of the ERAP program was not properly funded, we added more to it, a total of $1.5 billion to help people, plus money to help people who are not previously eligible, as well as $100 million in state-funded rental substitutes. And also, sometimes you need a lawyer. Lawyers are expensive. We have an eviction prevention legal program, a legal assistance program that provides free legal assistance to low and moderate in in income tenants who need help, to help them avoid eviction. So all these steps are what we're taking, we're not done. In my State of the State address, I promise that we're going to have a new American dream here in New York. We call it the New York dream. And that dream lifts all people up. And part of lifting them up says, yes, you have dignity. You're a human being. You have value. And that's what we honor by signing this legislation today, to create the opportunity for people to feel part of the New York family with a roof over their head, safety, security. It's their right, and we're going to make it happen. So thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to introduce a great partner in government, someone who has been championing this initiative, as well as many others, to increase the opportunity for people to have access to affordable homes, and that's the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams. I want to thank you, Governor, uh, for uh, your leadership. Uh, many of the initiatives that you are putting forward have uh, basically stood stale and stagnant uh, for so many years and coming in and working with the uh, local elected, particularly the mayors across the entire state and the lawmakers in Albany, you have been able to create the partnerships that are needed to move these important pieces of legislation forward. And so I want to personally thank you uh, because uh, this is going to dramatically change the lives of countless number of New Yorkers. Uh, today, we're saying yes to more housing. Uh, yes to utilizing the resources that we have in the appropriate way. And yes to listening to those uh, who know firsthand, like Shams LeBaron, who have been a very notable advocate on dealing with those who are homeless. And our partners in HTC, uh, Rich, can I thank you enough for really talking about how do we use our hotel population correctly to continue to have union jobs, but at the same time uh, utilize those hotels that had a market that was overly saturated, uh, and using those spaces to do something that many of us know is important, and that is permanent housing. Uh, the hotel conversion bill will unlock uh, affordable housing for New Yorkers. Uh, we talked about it, and now we have put it in place with the actions of the lawmakers in Albany and the governor moving forward with this important piece of legislation. Uh, New York needs affordable housing. Uh, we cannot argue with that. And to not focus on uh, converting uh, hotels, 
that are currently there, currently on the market, sitting empty, converting those hotels into now apartments with permanent housing. Uh, repurposing these housing are going to allow uh, uh, older adults, uh, those with families, uh, take these older buildings and now utilize them to give someone a newer life, a life where they can feel they are receiving the housing they deserve and supportive housing. As we engage in the conversation around what are we going to do with our ho homeless population that are dealing with many different issues, supportive, supportive housing is the answer to this issue and this is going to allow us to do so. And it's going to help us unlock 200 million in funds that we have been eager to utilize and spend the right way. And when you are able to do that to create permanent housing, it's a win for taxpayers, it's a win for the industry, and it's a win for everyday New Yorkers who are looking for housing. This bill would do more than build apartments. It will transform lives. Nothing is more transformative than being able to have your permanent space so you can raise your children and families. So Senator uh, Kavanaugh and Assemblyman Simberwitz uh, for the, your vision. And as the governor stated, you probably have more pens than anyone from the bills that you are producing helping New Yorkers. And we want to thank you for that. And we want to thank the governor for signing uh, this bill. And we want to continue to thank our partners and the city council who advocated for this, uh, as well as those in Albany, our partners there, that clearly understood this was the pathway to go. New York is the dream. Uh, as we partner with the American dream, as the governor stated, uh, there is a New York dream. And today we are ensuring the continuation of that dream. Absence of a home. You live in a nightmarish reality that you are not participating in the American or the New York dream. Today we say no to that. Today we say we are a city and state of yes, and we are a place where we will get stuff done. True partnership is allowing this to happen. I thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Uh, it is uh, indeed a great pleasure to be here two days in a row with the governor signing uh, you know, terrific uh, legislation that really is going to make an enormous difference in people's lives. Um, as the governor said, uh, you know, we have uh, a series of kind of interlocking, uh, intersecting problems here in, that are, that f across the state that are not new, but in many ways have been exacerbated by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, we have an eviction crisis, we have a foreclosure crisis, we have a homelessness crisis, and we have an affordability crisis that affects uh, even people who have jobs that we traditionally considered good jobs. Um, we in this state, uh, with the governor's leadership, have taken enormous steps forward in addressing each of those, and we're doing another such step today. Uh, as the governor mentioned, the budget uh, that she proposed and that we enacted uh, invests enormous amounts of money in new capital spending to produce new housing. It also invests enormous amounts of money in uh, subsidizing the rent of people who have been unable to pay their rent during the COVID crisis and also the, some of our other programs that, that support people in that circumstance. That is unprecedented. Uh, the U.S. government, of course, has started that EREP program, but not nearly enough money has flowed to states like New York where we have high needs. And to my knowledge, there is no other state in America that is devoting a billion dollars in a budget this year to that purpose. Um, it's a huge uh, victory and a huge commitment to making sure people can meet their most basic need, their need for a home. Um, but we know also that uh, while we invest a lot of money, while we invest in lawyers to make sure people are represented in court when they're facing eviction or foreclosure, uh, we also are going to need to change the rules that have made it more difficult for us to provide housing for people uh, in our state. We know that uh, we have uh, some unduly restrictive rules around development that the governor uh, tried ably earlier this year to get done, and you know we're, that's still a work in progress, but I stand with her looking to move forward with that uh, as we go forward the uh, next couple of years. 
Uh, we know that uh, development has been too expensive and too restrictive, especially in the New York metropolitan area. We know that sometimes converting property to the, the, to the need, to the, big, the greatest need, um, is challenging because of all kinds of arcane rules and you know complex standards, and indeed in this case, uh, zoning rules that prevent these hotels from being converted to permanent housing. So we're taking a big step forward, um, and of course, this kind of thing cannot happen without two kinds of partners. We have a city government that embraced this, embraced the flexibility necessary, and is making a real commitment to lead the way at making these conversions, making converting hotels to permanent housing as quickly as possible. And we also have a terrific uh, and very effective advocacy community uh, here in New York that knows how to advocate for these changes and then also, of course, knows how to deliver. So we're expecting you all to deliver. Let's get some hotels converted to permanent housing as quickly as possible to demonstrate this. Um, we're going to hear from, from Ted Hout in a moment, uh, I think, as a representative of, of uh, you know, the, that whole community. Um, and lastly, you know, I want to, I'm, uh, segue into an introduction here, but uh, uh, Rich Morocco and the um, Hotel Trades Council played a huge role in this. Um, and candidly, when I started thinking about legislation to convert hotels to permanent housing about a year and a half ago, my concern was I have to, we have to make sure that we are not you know, threatening those jobs, making, make sure the union is not going to view this as kind of something that's going to diminish their ability to, to produce the great jobs that they have been so successful in producing. Um, I didn't anticipate that we would actually have such a very strong advocacy partner, not just to say this is okay, but actually to make sure that we get it done. Um, the union has played a big role in making sure we get this done. Um, it is it, to the credit of this union that they have embraced this progressive cause along with so many others. So uh, without further ado, let's bring up Rich Marco, the president of uh, HTC. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Rich Morocco. I'm the president of the Hotel and Gaming Trades Council, and it is really my privilege and my honor to join Governor Hochul, Mayor Adams, Senator Kavanaugh, and Ted Houghton, uh, who all worked tirelessly to pass this really important legislation. I mean, look, hotels are the cornerstone of New York's economic infrastructure. They create tens of thousands of good jobs. They provide um, hospitality to millions of visitors every year, and they help to stimulate our economy. Unfortunately, not all, all hotels fit that mold. Too many hotels pay substandard and poverty wages. They're a blight on their communities, and they attract illicit and illegal activity. Those types of hotels do nothing to promote tourism, to create good jobs, or to enhance those communities. And those are the hotels that should be repurposed into something that is beneficial to the community. Those are the hotels that should be converted to affordable and supportive housing. And I want to applaud all of the officials here, Governor Hochul, Mayor Adams, Senator Kavanaugh, the entire Senate Assembly, and the advocates for passing this law that will help us begin the process of converting these failed hotels into the affordable and supportive housing that we so desperately need and deserve as New Yorkers, while simultaneously protecting the good jobs that are provided by the legitimate hotel industry. So thank you, Governor Hochul. Thank you, Mayor Adams, Senator Kavanaugh, for your leadership. Uh, and it's now my pleasure to introduce Ted Houghton, who will close things out for us. Thank you. Thank you, Rich. <clears throat> the best affordable housing program are good paying jobs, and I really appreciate working with the Hotel Trades Council because tourism is so important to the city's economy, um, and at the same time, they've been great partners working towards getting more housing for the people that desperately need it. We do not have enough housing. Homelessness is a housing shortage problem. We lost over 100,000 single room occupancy housing units in the 70s and 80s, and we've been building that back with supportive housing, which has been a great success. And we've got great new investments uh, to build more supportive housing, but we've only built about 35,000 units over the last 40 years. We can't build fast enough. 
And this bill will allow us to do things different. This bill gives us the regulatory relief that will allow us to do more quickly and efficiently the conversions that we need to do to catch up to the city's housing need and to actually give people who are homeless, people who are housing needy, the homes that they need to prosper and to make this city, to revitalize it and to make it into the place that we all dreamed of when we came here, when we grew up here. It's the place that we all love and it's the thing that we need to do to make it bring it back to where it was. This would never have happened without this broad coalition. It's really the most diverse coalition I've ever worked in. The Hotel Trades Council has been a great partner. Housing experts, homeless advocates, uh, people experiencing homelessness themselves, uh, the industrial areas advocates, all these people have come together to come up with a sensible solution to get rid of outmoded regulations and let us build. We're going, we, you know, investments are so important and the, having the resources and the money to build affordable housing is so important. And we've got a mayor and a governor that are doing unprecedented investments that are larger than we've ever seen before. But we also need to get these regulations out of the way so that we can use that money and create those homes for people that need them so desperately. Uh, assembly member Steve Simberowitz, who couldn't be here today, worked so hard to get this through the assembly. And Senator Brian Kavanaugh, thank you so much for your work. Brian drafted this bill, or the original version of this bill, 16 months ago, I think, over a weekend, I said, you know, we really need to do something with all these boarded up hotels that I keep seeing. And he was on it and he has worked tirelessly to get this legislation passed. It only took 16 months, but, uh, but we're here. And there's still a lot of opportunities out there and we've really got some work to do. I see a lot of my advocate friends and provider uh, friends and developers that are ready to go. We need to create some housing. Thank you so much for all the work that everybody did here. And last but not least, I want to thank the mayor because this is not doing things the same old way. This is, these are new ideas. These are things that people, you know, they, they wonder, do we really need to go there? Do we really need to do that? And this mayor, along with the city council speaker, Adrian Adams, said, yes, we do need to do it. We need to take these bold steps to really make this happen. And that doesn't happen just any, any day. They took risks, and now we're going to prove that that was the right move. We're going to build some homes. So thank you so much for all of you. Governor, thank you so much. Let's sign a bill. Signed. Yeah.